Hey Siri. Turn on the gaming room lights. Okay, the lights are on. Okay, the lights are on. Guys, you heard her. Let's talk dub dub. What up everybody? How you doing today? My name is David Franco and welcome back to my main channel. I say that because I do have a gaming channel. It's linked right below. Check it out. I appreciate it. And actually gaming was quite the big focus today for Apple. And I definitely have some things to say in regards to that and how I wish Apple would truly approach gaming, but that's never going to happen. But anyway, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so today's a big deal, guys. Today is the Worldwide Developers Conference. Conference. Great start, David. Great start. And well, this is basically the non-consumer event. And I say that because there's always people who want to say, well, I didn't see anything about the new iPhone. I didn't see anything about a new iPad or this stuff doesn't apply to me. Well, of course it doesn't apply to you. This is a developers conference. We just happen to be, you know, in the back seat watching the driver do his or her thing, you know. Uh, but today is a big deal because we get a sneak peek at things to come for iOS 16 iPad OS, the next watch OS, brand new M2 powered Max, plural, more on that in a bit. A sneak peek at the new Mac OS Ace Ventura. Just kidding. Minus minus the Ace. Um, and lots more. So let's just let's just dive right into it. Um, as you can see, I have Apple.com up here. Okay, so I'm not like every other creator on YouTube. I'm 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 not I'm not gonna go through every single thing that Apple announced because I think that's just boring. Instead, I'm going to give you my own personal spin on things and how I feel about things that mean the most to me and basically the features that I'm most looking forward to. So here we go. First up is iOS 16 and I do have my notes on the right on Gmail. So excuse me if I look over to the right a lot. So let's go over to iOS. I'm assuming we can get there from here. That's iOS 15. You know what? Let's go back to the homepage. And scroll down. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so we have an extensive preview of everything coming to iOS 16. As always, there's a lot to talk about. I'm not going to talk about every single item, as I made clear. But, yeah, this definitely looks like a good update. Because if I recall correctly, iOS 15, for me personally, wasn't that exciting. Because they had so much focus, literally, focus on the focus features. And... Honestly, I never got into that. Now, I do understand focus is a huge feature for a lot of people because you can set up certain scenes, you know, like per your workflow, per your sleep routine, whatever. I just don't find it that interesting. But this, this I do find interesting. A completely reimagined lock screen. As far as I'm aware, this is the first time since the original iPhone announcement years ago. What was it, 2007? that Apple is actually allowing us to fully customize the lock screen. And guys, I'm not just talking about the wallpaper. Yeah, that's great. But how many times have you found a wallpaper that just collides with the time? And yeah, iOS does its best to contrast, you know, the time with the background of your wallpaper. Uh, but until today, we've never really had any true customization features. So this is really cool. We can actually not only change the font of the clock, Check this out. But it's much like customizing your watch face on watch OS. You see how you're choosing different features and all these different colors and whatever. And then check this out. They're actually going to swipe much like your customized. Okay, so they didn't swipe right there. But these features you can swipe much like on watch OS. And I think that's really cool. Guys, consistency is huge with me, especially when it comes to user interface and user experience design. I love consistency across platforms. And that's what makes Apple so successful with the iPhone and just iOS in general. It's a very consistent platform. Going from your iPhone to the Mac, from your Mac to your Apple Watch, to your iPad, all the way back to your iPhone, it feels like a consistent ecosystem because that's what it is. So when people customize their lock screen on their iPhone, I guarantee you they're gonna say to themselves, wow, this feels a lot like the Apple Watch. And I think that's huge. Now, this is cool. You can create uh, multiple lock screens, again, much like the Apple Watch. So I actually I actually missed this feature during the announcement because I was too, too busy typing up my notes. But this is actually 
really neat. You can set up multiple lock screens, which actually could be huge per your mood that day. You know, like if you're feeling bright, you can do something like this. Or if you're feeling dark and edgy, you can do something like a skull in the background with contrasting text, you know? Anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but I'm definitely interested in making future content about customizable lock screens on the iPhone because I do think it's by far one of the most interesting features Apple talked about today. I think it's absolutely huge and I cannot wait to customize these lock screens to my liking. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And probably my favorite feature of today besides the MacBook Air. And that's not really a feature, that's a new product. Anyway, we also have a messages updates. You can edit text and undo your send. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna find that easily. Here we go, edit a massage, edit a message. By the way, do you guys ever find it ironic when people misspell the word college into collage? That, that just baffles my mind. Oh, and especially your and your, it blows my mind how people still don't know the difference between just your, Y-O-U-R, and a contraction of you are, your, you're going to the movies. Drives me crazy. Now, is this going to fix people's <laughs> lack of grammatical skills? Absolutely not, but it will definitely assist in those situations where we do make typos and we know we made a typo and it's annoying instead of having to do the asterisk and then you put the right word in. Guys, I do it all the time, all the time. I'm I'm not perfect. Neither are you. So this is this is this is really cool. Um what else? Okay, so Apple Pay later. This just sounds like an irresponsible way of buying shit you don't need, but but I'm all for it. So basically, this means you can um, split the cost of your Apple Pay purchase into four payments over six weeks. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't realize it was six weeks. I thought it was like four to six months. That's actually really cool. Six weeks is not a long time. So if you're buying that iPad Pro, you really don't think you need, but you can afford it anyway, then why not do Apple Pay later and pay it off in six weeks rather than six months. You avoid interest, you avoid those fees. I see this being win-win. And hey, if anything, this might teach a lot of people the value of a dollar, which is pretty cool, pretty cool. But then again, this is coming from the guy who paid nearly $800 for a PlayStation 5. So I'm not the best person to give financial advice. So moving on. Next generation of CarPlay. Let me find this, guys, we're doing this live. This is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, ironically, this doesn't, What's, what's, what's the word? Apply to me because I have a Tesla Model 3. Absolutely love my car. I've never loved the car so much, so this doesn't apply to me whatsoever. But for those cars with CarPlay support, you guys are going to love this. So this is basically a complete revamp of CarPlay. Think customizing your watch face or your iPhone lock screen, but on your car, in your car, I should say. This is absolutely incredible. You can change the user interface for your speedometer. You can set up widgets for your calendar, your trip, and it's incredible. Like, this is really cool. This is the biggest hint at either Apple is making a car at some points or they're just not caring at all and they're just kind of throwing it in our faces saying, hey, look, we're not going to make a car, but here, you can still have an Apple card-like experience. So, I don't know. Personally, I do think we will see an Apple car by as late as 2030. I know that's eight years away, less than eight years at this point, but that's gonna be here before you know it. So I do think we will see an Apple car. Guys, this is a huge hint. I mean, I, I think it's incredible that, and kind of ironic, that Apple is putting so much time and attention and so many resources into a product, you know, CarPlay in this case, for other products that aren't even theirs. So in this case, actual models of cars that they do not manufacture themselves. Does anybody else find that I rock? Now, I understand Apple is trying to make the consistent iOS experience in and outside of the home, but I do think, I do think you might disagree and that's fine. I do think this is a huge hint at the Apple car at some point, at some point, maybe again, 2030. Okay, let's go to watchOS 9. This isn't nearly as exciting uh, because they, did, they didn't really talk about too much. Oh, Pride Month, by the way, Pride Month. Yeah, yeah, gotta love it. This, this is not an Apple band, by the way. This is just uh, an off-brand from Amazon, literally like 8 or $9, but totally worth it. All right, can we get a preview of watchOS? Here we go. 
see the preview. So my first note is new, more expansive watch faces. Okay, so this is basically to take advantage of the newer Apple Watch, which I still don't have. I still don't have the new Apple Watch. Honestly, it just didn't do enough for me. However, with that said, this year, there's a very, very good chance I will be buying the new Apple Watch, assuming we get one in September or October. So let's see what's new here. Obviously, larger watch faces. I talked about that already. Uh, dropped on notifications. This is actually kind of cool. There have been those times where I'm looking at my watch and I keep getting notifications and it's completely interrupting my Apple Watch experience. So now it's a lot like the iPhone where they kind of swipe down up top. When you're actively using your watch, notifications arrive as unobtrusive banners. When your wrist is down, they are received as full screen notifications. So let's scroll back up and down. Maybe we'll get the animation again. Let's just do a refresh. There it is. There it is. You see that? It's very, very quick right there. Boom. That's huge. That's actually really cool. Subtle, but huge in my opinion. And finally, sleep stages. Let's go to sleep here. Sleep. I don't know why my all caps are on. So sleep stages and better lifetime. Yeah, better lifetime story. Better bedtime story. Uh, so you can see how much time you spend on REM, core, or a deep sleep, as well as when you might have woken up. Guys, I wake up a lot. I don't know about you. Maybe it's the copious amounts of caffeine I put through my body and I torch my body over time. But that aside, I don't have the best sleep cycle. Sometimes, sometimes. And I am curious to see how healthy my sleep stages are. Now, with that said, I don't see myself wearing my Apple Watch to bed. I mean, I don't know about you, but I often put my Apple Watch on my charging um, stand before I go to bed, much like my iPhone. However, this might inspire me to actually start using my Apple Watch in bed. We'll see. We'll see. I don't think the battery life is quite there yet, but hey, the feature's there, so maybe I'll use it over time. Okay, we do have the official M2 introduction. I think most people expected this. Honestly, I would have rather seen a new Mac Mini, but that's beside the point. I do think we'll see a new Mac Mini by fall at the earliest and the latest March of next year. That's my prediction. Okay, so this is a brand new chip, guys. We have a second generation 5 nanometer chip, 8 core CPU, get this, is 18% greater performance than the M1. And the M1 as it is, is already insane. It's it's definitely overkill for, for uh, most, most people. Uh, but hey, more the better. And we also have a 10 core GPU. Keep in mind, this is an SOC, which means system on a chip. So everything is tightly, tightly integrated. Uh, so this means we get a 35% greater performance than GPU performance on M1. 35%. Five percent, And I'll say it again, M1 is already insane as it is. I don't see most people needing this much power, but hey, Apple's giving it to you, so why not take it? And we do have up to 24 gigabytes in unified memory. That doesn't seem like a lot when you compare it to PCs or whatever, but again, this is a system on a chip, so unified memory acts a lot differently than actual RAM chip modules. Actually, I should even say RAM chip modules, just RAM sticks. That's what I like to call them anyway. Okay, so this is the new MacBook Air, guys. This is the first official Mac we have that has M2. We have a beautiful new design. Right off the bat, when they were introducing this, I was like, whoa, this looks like an iPad. Does this not look like an iPad? Even even the notches there, like, I think it looks absolutely incredible. I think it looks beautiful. I don't really have any complaints. Uh, we have an 11.3 millimeter thin design. It weighs only 2.7 pounds. We have four finishes, silver, space gray, starlight, and midnight. Now, in my opinion, the first three grays are kind of similar. Now, the midnight's kind of like a dark blue, but these three right here, look at that. Is it just me? They're very, very similar. So I guess I do have one small complaint. More colors would have been nice, much like the iMac. Um, but that's okay. Like Personally, if it were my choice, like if I were actually to buy this, I would I would go with space gray. I love I love the darker tech from Apple. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, we have a 13.6 inch display, thinner bezels than before, 25% brighter, very very nice, silent, fanless design. I love fanless computers. I have a 2017 MacBook. I don't use it as much anymore because I have a 20 21 MacBook Pro, something like that. 2020, I think 2021. Either way, it's the MacBook Pro. 
um, with M1 in it, and I love it. Occasionally, fans might come on if I'm streaming from my computer to Plex and doing Photoshop and doing Final Pro 10 at the same time. That's the only time I tend to hear the fans on. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's a very silent computer. Anyway, with that said, to have a fanless design is absolutely awesome. Now, keep in mind, anytime you have a fanless design for thermals, that device is going to have to throttle itself. So you're not going to get performance from this thing like you would a MacBook Pro. Uh, but even with that said, guys, M2 <laughs> is absolutely incredible. It's a power-efficient SoC, so I see absolutely no reason why you wouldn't want to buy this if you're looking for power on the go. Except for one thing. I actually would sell my MacBook Pro for this device. I think it's beautiful. I think it's awesome. I think it's a great deal. But there's one thing keeping me back. The lack of a 120 hertz display. I'm so used to quick refresh rates from my iPhone to my PC monitors, I have three 144 hertz monitors right in front of me, to my, well, I guess Apple Watch doesn't have it, but my MacBook Pro has a faster 120 hertz ProMotion refresh rate. So I don't think I can go back to that on the Mac. Now, the iPad Air, maybe, we'll see, we'll see. But um, yeah, that's literally the only thing holding me back from not buying the MacBook Air and selling my MacBook Pro is the lack of ProMotion. But I completely see why Apple went with that approach. Obviously, they don't want to, I guess the word is cannibalize, right? Sales of the MacBook Pro with the MacBook Air. Uh, so that is the fine line. That is the fine line. And of course, you don't get mini LED. Uh, but for what it is, guys, all day battery life, fast charging. Um, it starts at $1199, which I think is a fair price. I don't think that's bad at all. Uh, let's actually view, view pricing, see what we can get here. So the M1 MacBook Air actually starts at $999. That's still a great deal. Now, you're not getting the same display, obviously. Uh, but with M2, $1199. So let's just, let's just put one together for fun. Let's go with the... Um, do, 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 do. What, what is the big difference here? So SSD. See, I wish Apple started at 512. So let's actually start at the base model and customize from there. Um, that's fine. The M2 chip with 8-core CPU, 8-core GPU. Um, eight gigabytes unified memory is fine for most people, but me personally, if I were to buy this for myself, I'd go with 16 gigabytes, 512 gigabyte SSD. Now, you know what? Let's bump it up to one terabyte SSD. I don't need a new power adapter. So look, now we're up to $1,800. So now let's go back to the MacBook Pro. That's 1800 right? 1800 Let's go to my 14-inch MacBook Pro. 1800 Say it's still less than the $2,000 computer, but just for a couple hundred dollars more, you are getting that mini LED display, which in my opinion is worth it. It's absolutely incredible. Oh, and by the way, we do have a 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro, which is very interesting. Very interesting because it obviously didn't adapt the display. Actually, there, whoa, this is, I just realized, wow, the M2 MacBook Pro still has the touch bar. That's so weird. But you know what? At the same time, if you like the touch bar and you don't need mini LED and you don't need ProMotion, guys, you're getting an M2 Pro level computer from Apple for a baseline price, $1,300. Now, granted, yeah, you'd bump up the memory, you'd bump up the SSD storage. So, yeah, maybe the 14 inch MacBook Pro is still the better deal. But if you're buying base level and you don't need insane performance, this is actually a good deal. But me personally, I would I would never buy that because, in my opinion, that's just going backwards. Anyway, the MacBook Air is available next month, guys. Really, really impressed with it. And now let's go to Mac OS Ace Ventura. Just kidding. Minus the Ace. So this didn't blow my mind, but at the same time, my Mac does so much right as it is. And I sound like an Apple fanboy saying that, but guys, I'm being completely honest with you like the mac for me is so much better at productivity than my windows pc is like i hate my windows computer for work i absolutely despise it the only reason i have this is for gaming that's literally the only reason i use windows is for gaming oh you know what while we're on that subject this is this is this is my quick comment i wanted to make okay apple spends so much time today talking about gaming right like so much time talking about gaming but the thing is it's limited to the platform it's on. I truly wish 
Apple took gaming more seriously to the extent where I can build an M1 or M2 powered gaming PC, customizing it to my liking, and get that power efficiency that you get from M1 or M2 because my Intel PCs, they're not that quiet. You can hear them right now because of my microphone and my OBS settings and all that stuff. But I do wish these computers were quieter. Now, with that said, I will be going with an AMD Ryzen chip. I don't know which one yet, but I'm definitely going AMD on my next PC build. And I think that's more power efficient than Intel, right? I'm not sure. I still have a lot of research to do. But yeah, that's just my quick comment about Apple. Like, imagine what they could pull off if, if they took gaming very, very seriously from a desktop perspective. And even with that said, guys, we're getting Resident Evil Village on the Mac. That's actually kind of huge in itself. Now, will I be playing it on the Mac? Probably not, probably not. But the fact that it's even coming to the Mac is pretty cool. Anyway, first up is uh, Center Stage. Uh, not, not Center Stage. God, Apple loves our Center Stage. I just don't see the hype. Um, stage Manager. Where is it? Here we go. I just keep scrolling past it. Stage Manager is my favorite feature that was announced today um, for the new Mac OS. Now, I got to say real quick, there's a lot of negativity on Twitter. People be bitching for no reasons. Ah, I can't wait to click that by accident. Can't wait to disable that. Well, then don't enable it if it's not for you. But for me personally, Stage Manager actually seems kind of huge for my workflow. I'm constantly switching between photo editing apps, video editing apps, my Chrome, my Safari. Now, yeah, granted, I know a lot of people do that daily. But per my workflow, I've had times where Mission Control is just not enough. Yeah, it's useful as hell. Switching between apps on the Mac is easy, but sometimes things do get too cluttered, way, way too cluttered. Now, in my opinion, here it is. Stage Manager seems to be huge. It seems to tackle that issue, and that's actually coming to iPad OS 16, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, but let me see if I can get a better video of this. So switch, okay, here we go, right here. You see that? So you, you can seamlessly switch between apps because your apps will automatically be shifted over to the left side of your display. So it's it's kind of like mission control, but a dock on your left. And I think that's cool. There's a lot of negativity around Stage Manager. Again, people be bitching for no reason. I don't I don't get it. Like Apple's giving you a free update. Stop bitching. Um, me personally, I think it's cool. I think it's great. And I'll talk about that in more detail with iPad OS 16. So give me one minute. Okay, next up is FaceTime handoff. You can finally hand off your FaceTime messages. So let's say, for instance, you accept a FaceTime call while you're on the go or just walking around your house on your iPhone, right? Like, hello, blah, blah, blah. Y'all have that done in a minute. Then you're walking literally back into your office. You get close enough to your Mac where right there, you see that? It asks you if you want to hand off your FaceTime call. So it literally goes from your iPhone to your Mac. You can sit down in your chair and talk from the freedom of your desk. Yeah, the better word is convenience. The convenience of your desk is that's where all your files are, that's where your applications are. I think that's cool. Now, that's not going to apply to most of you watching this probably, but I guarantee you there are a lot of people out there who will find themselves in a very similar situation and they're like, wow, this is actually really cool. As someone who's copying and pasting text over my Wi-Fi network pretty much daily, almost daily, from my Mac to my iPhone and vice versa, this is huge. I love continuity. I love handoff. I think it's one of the best features about Mac OS. And you, you just can't get a similar experience on Windows, at least with this kind of, you know what the word is? Fluidity. That's a good word. Fluidity. Okay. Next up, you can use your iPhone as a webcam. This is really cool. Now, there are applications out there, like I believe third-party apps and actual physical products that might allow you to do this already. But the fact that Apple's building it into their OS is huge because let's face it, guys, listen, I may be an Apple fanboy sometimes, but I have no problem in admitting Apple puts some of the worst looking shitty webcams in their products. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Products meaning Macintosh related products, Macs, you know, iPhones have amazing cameras. So now I can use my iPhone as a webcam and this could actually be really useful because I'm not crazy about using the webcam on my MacBook Pro. As much as I love that computer, the webcam is not very good. Not very good, never let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, but the iPhone absolutely excels in the video department and I don't think anybody can disagree with that. So now you can do this officially, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's Mac OS Ventura, at least the features that interested me the most. Okay, let's go to 
iPad, baby. Let's talk iPad way down here. Okay, so there's only a few things, but the number one thing I want to talk about is increased pixel density support. So apparently you can see more on the screen. Let me just search the word density, see if it shows up. No, maybe display. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Display scaling mode. So this is really cool. Display scaling mode gives you more screen space to work with by increasing the pixel density of the display. It lets you view more in your apps, which is particularly helpful when using split view. That's huge. That's actually really, really cool. Okay, so whether you're using a regular size iPad or the biggest iPad Pro that Apple currently offers, you can actually change the resolution of your display. Now, obviously you can do this on the Mac, but the fact that you can do it on the iPad now is actually pretty huge. And guys, I'm all about pixel density. I'm very, very picky when it comes to monitors, displays, color, all that stuff. So thank you, Apple, awesome. Okay, Stage Manager comes to the iPad. Now, in my opinion, Stage Manager, as useful as it is on Mac OS, is definitely more intended for iPad OS. And once again, people be bitching. You know, you people, yes, I'm saying you people, hate if you want, I don't care. You people literally ask for better multitasking support, Windows support, overlapping windows, Apple gives it to you, and you still complain about it. You're like, eh, that looks all right, I guess. Like, what do you, what do you want from Apple, guys? What more do you want from Apple? iPad is meant to be used as an iPad, and the Mac is meant to be used as a Mac. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but I don't see Apple doing this anytime soon, guys. I don't see them merging the iPad and the Mac into one product. Would that be amazing? Of course. I'm not doubting that whatsoever. Trust me, I would love a product like that, but it's not going to happen for a long time, if ever, because Apple wants iPad customers to be buying iPads, and Apple wants Mac customers to be buying Macs. And hey, even both. Increased profit. It's a win-win for Apple, right? So anyway, in my opinion, Stage Manager looks incredible. This actually looks really cool. It's an easier way to switch between apps. And guys, this is coming from someone who has owned and sold, what, like four or five iPad Pros at this point. I love the iPad Pro. I go through that honeymoon phase. I use it nonstop. And then I always find myself going back to my MacBook Pro because... I just think it's a far better experience for productivity. For example, once again, we did not get Fonica Pro 10 on the iPad. I didn't expect it, but part of me was hoping Apple would surprise us, uh, but we didn't get it. And that's exactly my point. iPad does iPad things, the Mac does Mac things. So in my opinion, I'll say it again, I think Stage Manager looks really cool. And hey, if you don't like it, don't use it. Life goes on, I promise you. You're gonna sleep well tonight, I promise you. And finally, this is a huge feature. Let's find that, display. External display support. Now, personally, I've never really needed this, but for someone who uses an iPad Pro or just an iPad in general as their main device, and guys, there are people out there who do that. Me, personally, I just can't do it yet. But there are people out there who use their iPad every single day for their main computer, you know, computer. And there are times where they wanna hook it up to a display. Well, up until today, at least in the fall officially when this releases for the public, when you plug in via Thunderbolt, it literally mirrors your iPad screen on a monitor. And I just never, I mean, yeah, that's kind of nice if you wanna blow something up for maybe a presentation or you just want a bigger display to work with, you know? Uh, but this is cool, like this is true external support look at that the dock can be on the separate monitor you can resize windows with stage manager you can have a full screen view on your ipad you can have your other view up here for stage manager like that that's huge that's actually a big big deal and guys for resolutions up to 6k 6k so i think this is the beginning of something huge like apple is very slowly you know to be honest very slowly but surely Closing the gap between the iPad and the Mac. And I think that's incredible. Like, this is going to make a lot of people very, very happy. Now, does it apply to me? No, because I don't currently use an iPad. I don't even have my iPad Pro. I sold it a while ago. Uh, but hey, I think it's a huge feature, and that can be definitely 
quite useful. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on WWDC 2022. Not gonna lie, like it wasn't a mind blowing event because I really wanted a Mac Mini, but that's okay. That's okay. I can wait for that. Uh, but overall, I think I think it was a very solid event. Apple gave us additional multitasking features for the iPad, which is huge. Uh, the new MacBook Air is absolutely beautiful. I'll say it again, guys. If I didn't have a MacBook Pro and I didn't need a faster refresh rate in my display, then yeah, I would be ordering the MacBook Air um, next month when it is available next month. Uh, but it's just not for me. Uh, but overall, very, very solid events. I'm so excited for the new lock screen customizations on my iPhone. That's that's going to be huge. Like That alone is going to make my iPhone feel like a new iPhone, which I guess... I don't need to say because I'll be buying the iPhone 14 or whatever it's called in the fall time. But hey, overall, Apple, bravo. Well done. Well done. You are definitely holding us over. Oh, and by the way, I completely missed the fact that we do have a weather app on the iPad now, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Guys, it's been a long running joke now that Apple just can't develop a weather app for some reason, uh, but it's finally there. So there you go. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, what are your thoughts on WWDC 2022? Let me know right below, will you be buying anything? Will you be using the public beta of all these new features and software updates, which by the way, are available next month. Again, in beta. So use, use it with caution, of course, uh, but they are available to everybody in the fall. So guys, thank you so much for watching. It's time to edit, have plenty of coffee. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to hug your loved ones and I'll talk to you later. Peace.